And it's only kind of cut off. Um, all right, so hey, how you doing? I'm Todd. Um, this is my uh, this is my LED hand, and it's made of the product that I'll be talking about today, which I just turned off. Aha. Or maybe the battery just died. I think maybe that just happened. Well, let's see if I can do this. There we go. Hey. <laughs> All right, so um, this is perhaps the simplest uh, electronic uh, product or, or project that you'll see today, but I think it's a good case study for the whole idea of, hey, I want to take my little random thing and actually make it a product for other people to use, like normal people, not hackers. Um, because it's so simple. And really, I was struggling, and I thought maybe I should title this differently, like this is how to fail multiple times and still ship a bunch of, bunch of product. Um, we had uh, two Kickstarters for this. We had one in 2012, one in 2013, and they were, they were very successful. Um, the first one was a lot more successful than I actually anticipated, because I thought this thing is so darn stupid and simple, no one's going to really want it. Turns out 2,600 people wanted it. And um, so what do I do? I've uh, made these, uh, back in 2006, I made these Arduino tutorials that have, are apparently still in use. I've made some prototyping tools for Arduino called Screw Shield and WeChuck adapter for the Wee Nunchuck. Uh, I create some um, tech art in the, in the Southern California area with some other artists around. And uh, also with Carlin, I founded um, Crash Space, a hackerspace in Culver City, which I think might have been the first hackerspace, I'm not sure. It's like Null Space and Crash Space are kind of neck and neck on that. Um, and for my Hackaday cred, uh, back in 2006, um, a couple of my Roomba projects were published on Hackaday, and those pretty much directly led to a book deal to me writing a book on Roomba hacking called Hacking Roomba. And, <laughs> and uh, it sold not really that well, but, um, but I got a book deal out of it, and so I've got, a, I've got an ISBN number, and that's, and that's pretty cool. Um, so, so, what, so what is Blink-1? Blink-1 is just a little USB fob that has LEDs in it. That's all it is. It's uh, super, super duper simple, super duper dumb. Um, but the cool thing is, is you can hook it up to anything you care about, be it on your computer, on the internet, and to make connecting it to things on the internet, there's a service called If This Then That that takes all the hard work of connecting various services together for things like, normally it's used for things like, oh, I want to archive all my tweets to Dropbox. Or anytime I get an email, I want to have that saved as um, something, is, you know, something in my Evernote or something, and um, based on various conditions. And so we are one of the first hardware devices in the like, stable of things that if this and that can do. So now, hey, anytime that a Craigslist thing pops up matching a criteria, the blink one can be a color. And like, oh, red means uh, the, the Ferrari I've been looking for is for sale. Um, and uh, to make it easy for all the hackers to use, we have pretty much any language you want to use to control the Blink-1. Um, we've got it. We're actually in the main, mainline branch of the Linux kernel as well. And uh, just yesterday, I pulled some of our stats and were used by uh, like these companies and many others. So I'm pretty happy. The, what, what, what people are using them for is a, uh, is a, a lot of um, server management, server status, that kind of stuff. And so it started like way back when I was first playing with Arduino as your standard how to get started with Arduino sketch, USB controlling RGB LEDs, not very hard. Um, a couple months later, I made this little USB fob, and then it sat there not doing anything for like five years. And then we decided like, hey, let's make this a thing and see how it goes, make it a real product people, people would want to buy. And the production process is pretty quick once you have the idea. This is kind of like optimal timing. It takes a little longer a lot of times. And one of the things we quickly found out is that these things, real products, have a lot more details than kits. There's all this other stuff you have to worry about than just sticking stuff in a bag. And um, that, that, that this is some of the things. Um, so of course we had problems. First problem is that we had a bad CNC, bad packaging, and the Kickstarter was a bit more, more successful than I experienced, so, um, or the, the, than I expected. So I had a bunch of my friends help me out I'm actually building them. Don't do this, because we're not a pizza-based economy. Um, but then last year, let's have a second Kickstarter. Why not? We can fix all the problems with the first. It'll be so easy. It'll be done so quick. But no. Um, microchip, the maker of the chip, pulled back all of the inventory because there was a problem with the die of the actual CPU. So three chips was how many I could get for six months. Um, and then uh, 
the I to write custom assembly code to do the timing of the WS2812 NeoPixel LEDs, and of course, I had a problem with them. I got back 2,000 assembled PCBs, and they had this issue. They should not be doing that. Um, and of course, there's some uh, enclosure problems. There's this little tab that was shorting out a pin on the board, and um, that caused the, the Blink-1 to not work. And doing cross-platform development is hard. If you, um, if you hire the wrong dev team, you then waste many months and many dollars and not, don't have anything for it. Oh, but we shipped. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's a. And uh, so these are some of the lessons. Um, I have many more lessons if anyone was, was interested in it. And uh, the next things we're going to be doing is just improving things and maybe doing bigger, different ones or ones with a wireless of some kind. And that's it. And that's me. Yeah.